Representing the new movement in regional Mexican music, and more crucially, the culturally specific style of corridos, Tumbados is Nathaniel Cano. What do you truly know about this young Mexican singer who's been making waves recently? Well, in today's video, we're going to be telling you everything that there is to know about Nathaniel Cano. So stick around to the very end of the video. Nathaniel Cano is a Mexican musician who is renowned for his contributions to the musical genre known as Corridos Tumbados. He's received numerous accolades for his work in this sector. Nathaniel Cano was born on May 1st of 2001 and began his career as a professional musician in the year 2018. At such a young age, he's already established himself as a talented musician. When he was barely 18 years old, Nathaniel Cano became one of the most influential figures in the Corridos Tambados movement. His spiky, guitar-driven Mexican balladry style incorporated elements of rap and trap music into its sound. Since making his debut several years ago, the top-charting singer, composer, and guitarist has been at the forefront of a renaissance in the genre of corridos. He has modernized the style's sound and is credited with co-creating this trap-influenced subgenre of corridos, which is primarily known as corridos tombados. In the process, he became the third most popular Latin artist in the United States in the year 2020. With an immaculate voice, an ear for emotionally charged riffs, and razor-sharp lyrics, his talent and the music he has gathered up to this point have built a legendary career that spans fan bases and specific genres. Because of the singer's use of poetic narration, corridos were an unavoidable impact on him. He's already released three successful singles, each of which has an official music video to accompany it. The first song was released titled El Drip, and it was established on February 11, 2019. After accumulating tens of millions of views, the artist was offered his first record deal at the age of 18. Iniciales Al is the name of his second video, which he published online for the first time on April 11th of 2019. It was on the same day that his third music video, which was for the track El Nayer, was made available for viewing. This second album propelled him to the top of the music charts in Mexico and it caught the attention of other musicians, like Bad Bunny, with whom he worked to create a remix of his song Soy El Diablo. In the year 2020, he published four albums, Corridos Tombados Volume 2, Trap Tombado, Soy El Nata, and Las Three Torres. He gained popularity and he stood out on the Billboard charts, which led to invitations to appear on shows like Jimmy Kimmel Live. The singer, who was born in Hermosillo, Sonora, displayed an interest in music very early, and at the age of 17, he began his career in the United States with the Rancho Humilde record label which is situated in Los Angeles. He currently resides in the United States, although in 2021, he was involved in a public dispute with his label, Rancho Humilde. The event motivated him to take action and launch his own record company, which he calls Los City. He also views the label as an opportunity to push the boundaries of Mexican music in new directions. During a recent call with Rolling Stone, he shared his thoughts that regional could be bigger. If we had the best studios, the best engineers, the best people working on it with their whole hearts, it would be at the top of the list. With the help of Los City, we are working to change all of that. I want Regional to be number one. Now, this is what ultimately led him to releasing Natakong. The album was released at a time in his life when he was going through several significant transitions. Yet, when he was asked to what served as the album's primary source of inspiration, he responded as follows. The biggest inspiration was that I became the owner. If I can say it that way of my music, the album is coming out on my label and I position myself on the business side of my music. And I was like, I got the business part down, let's do this. From there, I started writing music with so much excitement. It was a new beginning after one year of not making music when I had all, had all these problems with my label and all, all these things happened. But in the end, it worked. I was living in Los Angeles and at the moment that everything was blowing up, I left for Mexico. After three years of living in the US, I went back to Sonora, where I was born. I went back with my friends. I made this album with my friends. So that was an inspiration too. Having my friends, my family, and the people around me. But when he was asked if being in Mexico changed the context of the album, you can probably guess what he said. Definitely. But this album was also recorded in so many places. I started it in Los Angeles. I kept going back to Sonora. I continued recording in Cancun. I went back to LA and I've been making it for so long. I finished it such a long time ago, which is why I think my fans have been going crazy over it. And I recorded some of the songs a bunch of times, like Estrellas and some other ones. I recorded about four times. Just, I wasn't happy with how they were turning out until I met Andres. He has a studio in Calabasas, and he knew I was a Mexican singer who had been in a good spot, but he was new to my music. 
he didn't know a lot about regional. So I showed him a little bit about the style, the guitars, and the mixing, and it brought cool energy to the album. When I met him, I was like, thank god, everything sounds so good in his studio when we work well together. One of the things that makes Nathaniel Cano so unique is that he's always been able to draw collaborators from a variety of musical genres, like Bad Bunny and Eladio Carrion. But have you ever wondered why musicians who work together in other genres, such as corridos tumbados and outside of the region, are drawn to his style? Well, he's already provided his response to this question. According to him, he believes it's because he's still youthful. He can easily adapt to any music you choose to play for him. When other artists witness this, they think themselves, Man, this guy is good. They're influenced by his style, and even though he sings in entirely different genres, they, they believe that he has the potential to collaborate on something. What do you think of Nathaniel Cano's net worth at the moment, or what would you estimate it to be? Well, according to reputable websites like Net Worth Spot, Nathaniel Cano's net worth in the year 2022 is estimated to be $4.9 million. That's a significant amount for a rising star at the age he is, but how exactly has he been able to accumulate such a large sum? His YouTube channel is undoubtedly one of the key ways he generates money. Considering that he gets approximately 18.52 million views every month, this is a significant source of income for him. However, this isn't the only way that he makes money. He's got several other things going on for him right now. For instance, he often participates in several speaking gigs that are from small local gigs held in more personal settings to much bigger venues. People don't typically agree to participate in activities of this nature unless they're being adequately compensated for their time. Though the exact sum of money that he's paid for these kinds of arrangements is typically not made public. In the same vein, he also has a few endorsement deals going for him, which is something that has shown to be incredibly lucrative for virtually everyone who's ever participated in one. Other items like affiliate commissions, some product sales, and even a few sponsorships might also contribute to a website's revenue. In addition to the money that he makes from his YouTube channel, each of these items contributes individually to the generation of a sizable income to him. Because of this, he has the opportunity to make more money in a single day than the majority of individuals probably make in an entire month just from engaging in these activities. It might be sufficient for him to be able to put all of his money and savings that he earns from his YouTube channel. And that's just a theoretical possibility. When seen in this light, it's not surprising that he's seen a significant increase in his net worth in the span of a little over a year. Now, if you're wondering where you could get his music, Pop Noble is a website that compiles and presents information about prominent music artists. According to statistics they've obtained for Nathaniel Cano, his videos have together gotten a total of 564.5 thousand likes and a combined total of 39.7 million views. The contributions that Nathaniel Cano has made to Latin music have increased the cultural relevance of corridos even though his artistic career is just starting. Nathaniel Cano has recently emerged in the music scene and has already made a significant impact. This young newcomer from Mexico has gotten a lot of attention in his first year of being in the business and the spotlight. He's off to a very good start. This is in contrast to the many brilliant musicians that struggle to become known in today's music industry. Because we believe that Nathaniel Cano has what it takes to become an international superstar in the not too distant future, he's definitely someone that we can keep our eyes on. We appreciate you sticking around to the end of today's video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so so you don't miss out on any of our stuff. Keep an eye out for the next one. Later.